Thanks for joining us today at our Access to Perspective special event on introducing you to the World Wellness Weekend, which will be primarily presented to you by our affiliate and uh, World Wellness Weekend ambassador, Julie Wren, here with us, um, zooming in from Belgium. And I just want to give you a quick overview of Access to Perspectives. We are a training consultancy um, agency, so to say, um, for global inclusive research management and science communication for the very benefit of society and the planet as a whole. Basically um, targeting researchers and research support um, experts and professionals um, who uh, want to pursue purpose-oriented research and science scientific activities. Um, <clears throat> so what we do is um, yeah, providing trainings and consultancies around these topics, um, all based on open science principles, um, including scholarly reading, writing, publishing, research project and data management, academic career development, global research equity is a core aspect of our work, particularly because we've also um, launched Africa Archive, uh, African focused um, open access portal and repository on a continental scale in 2018, which is now kindly hosted by and provided to you by Ubuntu Net Alliance in Malawi. And then for today's topic, we also cover aspects of health and well being in academia. Um, we do that in the formats of consultation and mentoring workshops and trainings or keynotes, speeches, talks, and seminars. And here are our affiliates. And in the center, you see a highlighted or spotlighted Julie. Um, and each of these is, these are like each of us works independently as professionals and in the academic and um, career support, uh, so to say, sectors. Um, and we all share a passion for research and well-being and um, the betterment of societies and the planet, and therefore mm -hmm. cooperate on based, based on the various projects that we work mm -hmm. at, um, which involve and include researchers, but also other um, sector representatives. We do have a podcast, at which also Julie featured a couple of times, which is run by Ibuka Zeke from Nigeria and myself. And you find all of that on our website, which I'll share the link in the chat as we move ahead. And you can also book a call, um, also not for May anymore, but now <laughs> moving forward uh, um, yeah, for a consultation or get to know each other. And if you have any questions on any of the offers, um, where you can book a meeting with myself and any of the team. Um, so yeah, with that, I hand over to... Julie, thanks for joining us Thank today. You. And um, let me stop the share. And now the floor is yours, Julie. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So everybody, we're going to dive into the world of what is World Wellness Weekend. So I don't know if anybody has ever heard of it. If you have, just pop in the chat for me a yes. That you've heard of this movement. It's a global movement. And I'm just going to start my presentation. If I can move these things around, you can see the screen. Yep. Yes, we see the screen in edit mode. Yeah. There we go. So, have what is that? Did we have some yeses there? Did we have some thumbs up that you've heard of this movement? Okay. So it's it's actually a movement that was started back in 2017 and it was inspired um, by SDG3 actually for how can we bring wellness to all? And we wanted to create it from a perspective of that wellness is not always something that is the same for everybody. So the idea was to, to create uh, this movement and this celebration to allow people to be able to discover all the different methods of wellness 
and I always say that you know well-being is the destination wellness is how we get there and and what in invigorates you might not be the same for somebody else but through this kind of initiative we're able to showcase many many different kinds of I say ways to well-being through these different wellness activities and we choose this particular weekend every year in September because it, it really represents uh, also that shifting, that balance between when the, the night and day is, is almost the, the same again. We're going into um, going into that period, the equinox. So it sort of has that sort of transformational aspect to it as well, which is really important. Now, we are currently up to 150 countries. And I checked yesterday and we've got nearly, uh, I think, eight and a half thousand different activities that are happening around the world. But we can still reach so many more people. So we want about you know we're thinking global and acting local and making uh, wellness social. So there's also an element to it to sort of how can we bring our communities together, and you know who is our community? Whether it's the the people that we live with, it's our family, it's the people we know in our village, or whether it's the people we actually work with. This is what we're we're trying to do. We're trying to sort of uh, create that idea that if we pull together, if we come together we can perhaps uh, encourage more people to get out there more often uh, and, and find a wellness buddy perhaps to be motivated to, to, to do different activities. Because I'm absolutely sure it's not a lack of knowledge. So if I just asked you right now here, do you know how many uh, liters of water a day we're supposed to drink? Pop it in the chat if you, you know that number. What is the recommended number of... Uh, of liters of water. Okay, four from Joe. Anybody else got an idea? What those recommended daily intake is two, two liters. Yep, great. So what about um, and again this does vary from country to country, but what what are the num what is the number that we put against um the number of uh, fruit and veg that we're supposed to drink and uh, eat a day? How many portions of that would you would you know? Do you know that? What do you think of the number of portions? Pop it in the chat as well. See if we can get another number in there. Seven to eight, Monica, I like that. Yep, okay. And then our final question is, uh, what do they talk about? How many steps are we supposed to do a day? What's that magic number for steps? How many steps? Oh, you're gonna do 1K? Okay. How many steps? So I think it's safe to say that, you know, at the end of the day, it's not a lack of knowledge because we can go online and we can Google anything these days and we can find out whether it's the right information or the wrong information, but we have a lot of information at our fingertips. So when we say knowledge is power, I would challenge that and say it's not the knowledge that's the power in the well-being. It's actually the doing. So how many of you actually get your 10K steps in every day? And how many of you are drinking those two to two and a half liters of water every day and having the seven plus portions of vegetables? So the, the thing is, it's, it's like, it's not that I need to tell you what to do. It's how can I encourage you to actually physically do it? That's where I think that we have a, a challenge sometimes is how do we build that into our, our day? How do we fit that into our lives? And especially when you're in your research programs, it, it's quite difficult, I, I, I understand sometimes, to pull yourself away and to be able to uh, find the time or find the motivation to be able to actually action those well-being steps. So coming back to what well, 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 we, sorry, what World Wellness Weekend is trying to do is trying to actually get you doing. And we have these uh, five pillars of wellness, uh, sleep and creativity, nutrition and immunity, vitality and movement, serenity and mindfulness, and solidarity and purpose. And when we look within those pillars, 
we are able to find different activities that really do perhaps inspire us. And so what we try to encourage people to do is to set up an activity, create an activity based on one of those pillars and then offer that to um, you know, your friends, your colleagues, your community, your family. And often what we'll have is businesses who are in the wellness space will create an activity and then they will open their doors and say, come along today and try a free uh, yoga nidra session or come along and see what uh, paddle boarding is all about. So whether you want to organize something yourself or take part in something, you can use the well map which you can see here on the, uh, on the on the screen. And that is able to, it's like a geolocator and you can find activities closest to you wherever you are in the world and come along. So this is about, uh, you know, if you're curious and you wanna try something else, or even if you yourself would like to put together uh, an activity, you can. And for the first time uh, this year, we're also having uh, a joint campaign with World Cleanup Day because World Cleanup Day is now a United Nations recognized day on, and it's on their calendar. And that happens to be the same day as World Wellness Weekend kicks off, which is the 20th of September. So we're also encouraging people to think a little bit outside the box. You know, yes, of course, we can get outside and uh, you know, pick up litter and create activities like that. But also we could think about uh, cleaning up our inner world because if we can, you know, uh, make changes internally, uh, perhaps we'll be able to make more changes externally. So, you know, a, a cleaning up creates like a ripple effect. You know, if I'm feeling great and fantastic, then maybe I'll want to go out and, and, and join more activities in my community that are focused on uh, improving waste management, um, but also like recycling or sharing information about how to lose, reuse sun recycle, less waste, so these are all kind of looking at wellness, perhaps away from the, the classic idea of a, what is a wellness activity. Perhaps we're thinking it's sport, but it can also be art. It can be music. So it's what brings you that sense of well-being and that sense of joy that uh, has you living you know, a fuller, uh, happier life. So that's what we're all about. We're all about trying to mobilize the world to uh, discover their way to well-being and we're fortunate enough as well to be able to count um, many associations and federations and mayors and ministers who see the benefit of this organization as well. So that for us is really important that we get on board, uh, you know, cities. And that's why, you know, we're trying to now also see if we can get uh, universities involved and research centers. So what I'm gonna do now is let you have a little taster of what happened last year and see if that excites you. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to hear the music that goes with it, but at least you'll have an idea of the activities. And these are real pictures from all around the world of people enjoying their classes and the fitness. Last year, we have uh, got the list now of the uh, active countries all over the world, and Spain really on board and did a good job and organised so many different activities. So the 
it's, it's like, like a friendly competition between the countries. So around the world, we have ambassadors in many, many countries who are trying to mobilize and excite people to get involved. And yeah, anybody can really join. It's absolutely free to join. There is no cost to this. It's just you, obviously your time to organize it. And yeah, and to have fun with it. That's the most important thing. And it's about organizing a fun, free activity for 60 minutes. But some people go a lot further than that and they organize maybe things throughout the whole weekend. So the limit is up to you, up to you if you want to take part in that. And also if you want to actually go and experiment, you have the possibility from Friday right the way through till Sunday in your country to go out there and see all the different things that could be possible for you to do. And in some countries as well, they under the solidarity and purpose, uh, you may find also that people are, are offering um, uh, free access to medical uh, attention as well. And some of the university students out in Brazil were doing some free testing, blood pressure testing as well. So, I mean, th there's no limit to this. It's just perhaps your imagination that could be the only thing. So we, um, as I said, have 60 professional federations that get behind us and support us. Um, we also, you know, involve perhaps whole areas. So the Val di Fiemi in Italy, literally the whole valley takes part. And there's an amazing um, activity program that begins and uh, com completely covers the whole weekend, but it focuses on the valley. So we can have uh, uh, your company can get involved, your city can get involved. Um, or your region can get involved as well. So there's no, no limit. And basically you just go to, to the well map. You can create your own page, create a logo, banner, or photos. Uh, you can just say, put, maybe you want to do your student body. Maybe you've got to put your university on there or your institution can go up there and you can create and tell everybody about what you're doing, uh, create your own activities and then you know, start speaking to um, journalists, uh, local media, get some visibility for your event, and you're off. And Joe, I wanted to hand over to you here because I think this is really important. Why did we come to this point for you and I to have this conversation about World Wellness Weekend and how it can impact, uh, let's say, the productivity and the, re and the research? Do you want to just take over from here? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Julie. Um, so basically, as I've shared in the chat, we at Access to Perspectives, we also have a section and also courses and um, information on health and well-being. There is unfortunately an increase of unwell-being, especially for mental health issues that um, that are being re reported in the academic sector. And there's a lot of um, conversation and also mitigation efforts in different countries, different regions of the world and different um, discipline areas, so to say. Um, so there's a dire need. And I think the same is also true in other, um, like outside academia and other professional settings, but especially in academia for various reasons of, um, yeah, questionable incentive systems that we are busy to rectify to to make more quality and integrity oriented away from the um, pure numbers um but yeah so that's that's happening um there are a few um like mitigation efforts but like personally i found these more symptom oriented where People talk much about, okay, we have a crisis. How can we fix that? How can we help people already have uh, mental health issues? And yes, that's um, important. But I felt like I'm um, talking to you, Julie, and learning about the world on this weekend and raising awareness of the benefits that we all know um, physical activity can bring to both our physical and mental well-being. And how, as researchers and also other academic staff, we find ourselves most time of the day, first of all, working extra hours, um, as, especially as researchers. So there's not a nine to, nine to five job, um, even though it's like from a health perspective, it's better be, but it's often not. Um, and then you find yourself in dark rooms, microscoping, and like it's just an unhealthy working environment to be in. So we need to balance that with actual intentional 
activities to get our bodies moving and some have a natural some of us like some individuals have a natural tendency of doing so others find themselves trapped in the hamster wheel of uh, publication pressures and other um other pressure points so yeah and with this initiative now that we're putting this together we want to sensitize and support institutions and research managers, but also researchers um, directly in taking their own health and well-being into their own hands and doing something about it by being more aware and dedicated and committed to actually, like you said, do something about it and do like doing, um, what did you say? Do we have COVID this in the chat. So doing this power basically. So that's just, yeah walk to the like or or ride the bicycle or do some physical exercise on the way to to the institute or like things like often it's simple things that we can do um, on a daily basis like counting steps not using the elevator but using the staircase things like that but also actual physical um, activities and institutions might have the capacity to partner with local sports studios to provide for the staff a free or subsidized um, membership. Um, and there's many examples, all of which are listed in the World Wellness Weekend um, website and resources. And we want to bring this to attention to um, scholarly professionals of all kinds yeah. and particular researchers and as well as librarians and other research managers. So within that respect, what we're talking about is well-being at work. And I think that starts with building a culture for well-being as well. So this could be like a fun activity to kick off with, to put your get your team together and sort of discuss and talk about what are the what are the things that you'd like to do that you think, oh, how do I build that into my day? Or how can we as a team support each other so that we are recognizing that you can't sit at your desk for you know 12 hours a day and not suffer the consequences on it so how do we work differently that's what i think is, is important to discover as well that you don't need to do a lot to get a lot and then you can build on that so it's always that first step sometimes it's like where do i start i don't know where to start i don't know what to do because it all feels incredibly overwhelming but i always say it's about taking the first next best step that is going to get you that one movement closer to where you want to go, which is like, you know, establishing what is your wellness vision and what is your wellness objective? Because within that, then you can start to build on it. So I think that World Wellness Weekend gives you that opportunity to look at how could we be doing things differently? Uh, what could we be doing to support each other? And, you know, what activities uh, give us joy and make us happy? And perhaps do that as a team and make that weekend the, the, the turning point because we're talking about January as well. Uh, we're talking about September being the new January, you know, not waiting till January to put in place new things. Let's do it now. The summer in this part of the world is, is holidays are coming to an end. Um, you know, the seasons are changing. You know, why is now not a, a, a great time? Why do we have to always wait? You know, you can change things whenever you wish. Starts with you, so just move on to the next one and here's some just some examples you'll find something here that uh that will excite you you know let's pick out uh dancing you know i <laughs> i i used to call it the kitchen disco i'm sure you might have heard of that during lockdown put some music on have a bit of a dance if you're, you're able to in the lab and you can put a bit of music on and have a little bit of a, a physical movement why not that's that's getting your heart pumping. That's getting you going. It's making you smile. That could be a a, a, a nice uh, activity um, to build into your daily life. But learn. Go and have find a dance class to learn some of those great moves. Um, we're also looking as well at, at countries as well where perhaps during the day it's too hot to do things. So what could we be doing at night and creating fitness by night? A sort of a, a, a zumba in the dark class. Um, you know, or doing fitness somewhere, which is an inspiring, uh, an inspiring view. 
just getting outside, like we were talking about, how can you get more of the great outdoors into your life? And, uh, you know, things like forest bathing can also be very good for mental health. You could uh, create a, a cleanup, perhaps, and include that with a nature walk or go and do some cleaning up in the forest. And at the same time, you'd be having your forest bathing. So on that weekend, that could be, again, a nice activity to to find somebody to guide you, perhaps as an expert. But you know, even within our colleagues, sometimes we don't know where our wellness champions are, people who outside of their working life do different activities. And maybe they can be the person that's going to you know, be the leader on this particular weekend. So, yes, so personal growth and creativity also important as well. So creating um a workshop around nutrition in fact, you could invite a nutritional therapist to come talk to your team about how to put together those amazing healthy lunches that are going to keep your brain your big brains functioning all day long so that you've got the energy and the creativity to to see you through um well, painting as well is a great way to uh, uncover and unlock let's say I always say pathways whenever I'm stuck with with something uh, and I can't get it and I can't see my way through it whether it's a, a, an article I'm writing or something I just need to get my head around shifting perspective can be very very powerful whether that's shifting perspective in terms of where you are so physically going and doing or actually being using that creative part of your brain as well can often then unlock uh, those uh, those those stuck so using creativity as a way for growth and development and here's just some yeah some visuals of uh people all over the world who have been doing things to say the university in Cartagena, Cartagena, sorry in uh, brazil was very active we've got um some other schools involved in other countries as well which is important like to get a youth moving so yeah lots of different ideas from around the world and when you join, you get an official participants badge, which you can download. You can also get yourself uh, a champions badge if you're organizing uh, an event over the weekend. And, and when you become a hero, that's when you actually organize something that benefits as well for your so your so so for your your students, your staff, but also for your local community. So really thinking about how how where are where am I how do, how do, how where I am impacts uh, the people around me and what I do. So bringing them, involving them in, in two and bringing them something can also be uh, a great way to make stronger connections. So I don't know if anybody's got any questions on that so far. Hopefully it was um, clear for you about what we're trying to achieve. And here's just a little suggested countdown on what we advise our participants to do, you know, get everybody excited, talk about it, you know, collect, uh, collect interest from the press, the local TV and shows. Also, all, all publicity is good publicity. But then we also want you to think about after because it's not just one weekend a year. This is about being a catalyst for change. So we would love to see that people are continuing to think about how they can bring their community together and what they can do throughout the year uh, around creating wellness weekends, plural. And, and that could be, you know, gather, gathering the, the, the team together and maybe you go and do a, a cleanup at the same time you're you're litter clean up at the same time you're also physically working out you could uh, do some volunteer work it, it, this is a whole broad, broad range of activities that we can see that we could continue throughout the year we don't just have to wait for this one weekend but this weekend itself is that like let's celebrate what we've done or let's celebrate what we're going to do so use it as a kickoff or as a, say a, the celebration of your your wellness year
just want to say a few words as well about a project we have running um, at the United Nations with um, an art installation we're going to be doing. So we would, people around the world who have been doing activities related to their local community under solidarity and purpose, you know, people making a real difference and change to their communities, we're asking them to submit photographs and there's going to be this beautiful piece of artwork that is going to um, be created, this uh, mosaic mural at the Palais des Nations Nation in, uh, in Geneva. So il illustrating this idea of, of good health and well-being for all. So, you know, if you are in the medical uh, um, faculty or you are involved in research, health research, for example, and you could think of some way to benefit um, your local community with what you're doing, then those kind of activities would be uh, able to be included in this particular project as well at the UN. And we have lots of online resources uh, to help you get inspired. And so they're all absolutely free. Um, if you're doubting why you should participate as well, we've got lots of different presentations. We've made uh, a specific uh, two-pager as well that you might want to access. Uh, we can put that out to you afterwards, which is just explaining why should you take part. And if you want to take this to your, your management team or your team members and, and discuss it, we've got to say this two-pager for you that will explain everything and hopefully you can get people uh, excited and motivated. We are all um, volunteers. There is nobody here that is on payroll. Um, we are all grateful to our sponsors that allow us to have a great website, to do social media, to hire in specialists to do certain jobs, but all the ambassadors all over the world are giving their time up for free. And I would say it was probably one of the most worthwhile things I ever did. I came to it during lockdown. It certainly helped give me a sense of purpose again after I lost my job. And I really thoroughly have uh, enjoyed my last two or three years. I think it is now 2022, I think it was, maybe more. Yeah, uh, with them. And we're on our eighth edition now. So, Joe, I don't know whether we have anything else we want to discuss with this but um, I think I can stop sharing. Yeah, thank you so much. This was really insightful, even for me, and you already told me so much beforehand. So. <laughs> but, um, I think what's add is that we've designed um, resources, like you mentioned towards the end, particularly for academic um, uh, professionals. So we will share those on our social medias. We also will find those on our website. Um, so leaflets you can download, posters you can print and then put on the an institutional um, blackboards. Uh, yeah, and maybe with that, um, so of course, please let us know what you think. Now, either on record or off record, you can also stop the recording here and let the listeners to the podcast and those who watch on YouTube enjoy the show as it has been until here and then have a more private conversation with the group who's now here live. Um, you yeah, know, don't forget to mention as well, Joe, before you shut the recording off, we shouldn't forget to mention as well that we have created a resource, the online course. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, so we also have, um, thanks to Julie's um, expertise, put together a course um, on well-being, nutrition, how to look after yourself in a professional setting and also personally. So, which we will also distribute the link, um, share the link to the blog post where this will be, all of this will be added. Um, so you can come back um so we created this course as i said because it's not about knowledge it's about getting things done so this is a done for you course oh no done it's like a getting it done for you course so we've got lots of activities in there so that each module is not taking you more than 10 to 15 minutes but when you walk away from the module you're actually going to get something done that's the whole point it's like it's not just a, oh another course that i've bought and i'm not going to do anything with this course is like, right, okay, now you can do this. And it's going to get you that one step closer. So that's how it's been designed to make sure that you're doing and not just uh, 
gathering more knowledge and not doing anything with it. Exactly. So I'm sharing this now in the chat and you can also find it in the show notes should you listen to the podcast. But with that, let's stop the recording and have a conversation amongst those in the room. Thank you so much for listening and please get in touch info at access to perspectives.org and you can also find us in other uh, in the social media streams and yeah just, just be in touch and let's move let's get moving see you